spectacular place to end my three incredible weeks here in Sri Lanka. We are obviously here at the stunning Gao Fort, my friends. That is the quintessential lighthouse. We have the Indian Ocean just over here and a beautiful, fairly well-maintained walled city that was initially began by the Portuguese in 1588, but primarily fortified by the Dutch. And then the British took over. And now, of course, Sri Lanka is an independent nation. And this is still a very important historical and cultural place. A lot of people do come to Gal Fort for just a day trip because it is easy to reach from a lot of the other popular places in the south, like Unawatuna or Marissa, where I came from. But personally, I think it's a great idea to spend at least a night or two here. You can stay in, you know, a local guest house. A lot of the buildings are from over a hundred years ago, so it is a very special experience. But in today's video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of the city, some things that you can see and do, and why you should absolutely make this a stop on your Sri Lanka itinerary. first first impression that I had of Gaul is that it reminds me so much of Cartagena and Colombia. If you see my prior videos I'm sure you guys will notice it too where it is a walled city built by the Spaniards of course in colonial times so if you've been there let me know uh, if you agree but it is just such a beautiful walk to go around the perimeter of the fort. I believe it's about two kilometers. Unfortunately, it is <laughs> extremely difficult to do getting into midday, which we are almost right now. And uh, yeah, I think I need to go get some breakfast or just go somewhere to cool off for a bit because the sun does not play around <laughs> here in Sri Lanka. <laughs> sitting right in front of a fan so I hope you guys can hear me okay with the mic but I am so excited for this breakfast place. I specifically picked it out because it is inside of an art gallery so you also have a lot of beautiful pieces all around you as you eat. They have a nice simple menu I already ordered typical Alina avocado toast. <laughs> and then this is a cardamom Americano. So let's give this a proper try. Iced, of course. Oh, that's nice. It is so hot, guys. That is, that is really nice. That is really refreshing and there's some kind of like little seed thing in it. I'm just gonna use my hands. Is this the actual cardamom? I actually don't know what cardamom looks like, but it, it really does give a really nice flavor to it. So I would recommend. And here we are with the star of the show. Looks absolutely fabulous. I know some people may say, oh, why don't you get the typical Sri Lankan breakfast, which is good, like it is delicious. But you guys, 
as with many other cultures, it's just us Westerners that are weird. They kind of more or less eat the same foods for like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like maybe there's just an egg in the hopper or something that differentiates it. But like the curry, the uh, roti, all of that kind of stuff are foods that they have for lunch and dinner. So of course I'm gonna take you to a traditional meal later on today but I'm gonna be real with you and I've said this in other videos like I'm very particular about breakfast and I like to have you know different foods as a breakfast thing I don't want to eat the same sort of foods this bread is really tough mm. I forgot to mention there's also a passion fruit glaze on this avocado toast so it is different if you are like me and enjoy shopping <laughs> you are in luck because i would say that gal has some of the best and unique shopping that I have seen in the country, especially if you are looking for really beautiful uh, locally made clothes. Yesterday I popped into a few different places that had really unique designs, high quality fabrics, and while it's not cheap, I still feel like it's reasonably priced and cool to have something that's actually made here in Sri Lanka. There is, of course, a lot of gemstone sellers, which you do have to be careful of. Definitely do your research to make sure that it is actually a verified place and that they're not selling you what they're selling you for a crazy price. But if shopping isn't your thing, you also have many other options like the Maritime Museum and also some historic homes that have antiques from like a few hundred years ago. Plus there's also the beach, like there is the beach right around the lighthouse where you can go swimming. So a really great place to spend the afternoon. There is something for everyone. Here we are in one of the older districts of the city. The most famous church arguably is right in front of us, the Dutch Reformed Church, which was built in August of 1755. Very unique design. I've only been to Amsterdam in the Netherlands, so can't say uh, I'm well acquainted with Dutch design, but very, very beautiful. And then right beside it is this cute little building that says Gal Library, which was established in 1832. Very interesting. For anyone looking for a suggestion of where to get a really good drink, I would definitely recommend the rope walk in the Gal Fort Hotel. I was just walking by this place and realized it was on my list, so I decided to pop in for a drink. What they are especially known for is a rock, which is a type of spirit that is distilled from coconut palm, I believe, and it is the biggest rock uh, like bar in all of Sri Lanka, I guess. So if you wanted to try something really unique here in the city, this would be it. How good does this look, guys? Refreshing. I ended up getting the Rampart Sunset, which is Rockland Old Rock, Creme de Cacao, Fresh Pineapple, Bitters, and I have no idea what Triacle is, but let's give it a try. My first rock cocktail, can't say I have seen this anywhere else in the world. Oh, that's nice. I made the right choice, obviously, with the kind of cocktail I got too, because 
I love creme de cacao and like pineapple flavor. So with the Arak being a coconut based drink, that is delicious. I definitely recommend this place. Feel like this is actually a great time for me to tell you guys about my Google Maps Sri Lanka travel guide. If you had seen the one that I already did for Bangkok and also Toronto, those are city map guides where I have over like a hundred different places just in one city, where to eat, where to grab a drink, best coffee shops, attractions, lesser known places, it's all in there. I'm in the process of making a lot more for many other cities, but a new thing that I am doing is also doing a very rough country guide of certain places that I would recommend seeing all over a certain country, as well as my own individual little places that might not be on regular tourist guides. So I've been making one as I've been here in Sri Lanka and unfortunately with the monsoon season in the north I could only really do the central to the south so I will have to come back. That is why right now I am selling my Sri Lanka travel guide at a pretty steep discount. Instead of the 20 Canadian dollars that I would usually charge I am selling it for 10 which is like seven us dollars i will have the link in the description i think it would be really helpful if you are thinking of coming to sri lanka but are a little bit stuck on where to go what to do this just automatically inputs into your google maps so you can feel more confident going to different places and having my personal recommendation back it up Next on our list is the National Maritime Museum because this is one of the main museums in all of Sri Lanka. Of course it does focus on actual ship making uh, here in Sri Lanka but there's also supposed to be a lot of articles from shipwrecks that were found on this southern coast of the country. A lot of interesting antiques and a friend of mine really recommended going so let's check it out. It is about five o'clock right now, so I don't know if I can even really call this lunch. <laughs> I just kind of skipped over that today, but I am hungry now. So I wanted to go to this place because it was very highly rated as a fairly, you know, local restaurant with much lower prices than you will find in many other places in the fort. Uh, honestly, most restaurants you're spending like 20 US dollars for a main and a drink. Here it's still higher than many other places that I went to in Sri Lanka, but as far as eating in the fort, this is pretty reasonable. As I said this is a lovely little local place and I decided to get the fish dish that they have here. Uh, they said it's called Dorado fish. It's like a white fish that's local to here. The veggie curry is of pumpkin today. We got a papadam which is like this cracker thing. Rice. Super super nice. Alright so let's give these curries a go. Of course, when you are visiting the south, you really have to try the seafood, especially the prawns and crab that they have down here. It's super good. I haven't had a lot of fish yet, so that's why I wanted to try some here. 
So let's try a bite, a little bit of everything. Got pumpkin, got fish, got rice. Mm -hmm. First of all, everything like melts in your mouth, which is so nice. The fish is so tender, so soft, really good. I actually love the pumpkin because it is perfectly cooked, like so smooth, savory, incredible. Would definitely recommend. That is it friends we are ending this day more or less where we started it here on the wall with the beautiful lighthouse in the background it's definitely a good idea to watch the sunset from the fort everybody comes out for it but today i don't know if we're gonna get the most epic one but it is still very beautiful i truly do think gal is a must when you are traveling to sri lanka even if you just go for a day trip i think it's absolutely worth the effort wherever you are in the south to come down here at least for a day and if you are looking for more suggestions of things to see and do on your trip all over sri lanka i will once again pitch myself and my sri lanka travel guide that is on for the lowest price it will ever be it will get higher later on when I return and do the northern part of the country. It will go up in price, but for anybody who already buys it, you will get the update. That's the thing with all the Google map travel guides that I make is that whenever I update the map, anybody who's already purchased it also gets the update. So if you buy the map now and I travel to Sri Lanka later and add more things to the map, you will get those free of charge. So I'll have the link for that in the description. Thank you so much to everybody who purchases one and supports my channel. It really means a lot. And since this is the last video that I am doing in Sri Lanka, I am off to a very <laughs> special destination next, which maybe I'll already have done a live stream from at this point. I'm not quite sure. But it's going to be different. It's for sure going to be different. I hope you guys are excited and I have thoroughly enjoyed my time in Sri Lanka. Would definitely recommend coming here. As always, I'm sending you guys so much love. I hope you're having a fantastic day and keep being your own kind of beautiful. Bye guys.